Hey, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Tuesday call. Uh, today is a combination of interviews with two amazing leaders. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. And if you haven't already, be sure to connect with me personally on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Mortgage Coach. We are uh, putting all of our updates and all of our information there. So every Tuesday, 9 o'clock, we are here to deliver leadership, ideas, stories, strategies, and insights. I'm always bringing top mortgage professionals. By the way, I am looking for new top mortgage professionals, loan officers that are closing over 10 loans a month consistently and doing it as a mortgage coach. So if you yourself or you know someone that would like to be a guest on one of these calls, shoot me an email at dave at mortgagecoach.com. Well, today we have two amazing leaders. We have top mortgage professional out of Northern California, Jeremy Forcier. Jeremy is gonna provide leadership on the second half of this call. It's going to be really focused as a top producer, as a mortgage coach, you know, very tactical about how to be a mortgage coach and how to turn TRID into an opportunity. But we're going to kick off the call with Steve Hardy. Uh, you know, I always believe, I, you know, always believe that telling great stories and sharing useful insights, it is a competitive advantage. The best mortgage professionals do that, and there's no one better than Steve Harney, who's got a tremendous backstory as a real estate professional as an owner of real estate companies, and now he is one of the nation's top trainers for real estate professionals. So Steve, I know you've got some bridge builder insights. Uh, I think we're on a roll. I think this is the, the fourth month that we've done this. And first of all, mortgage coach members, this is a real gift. What Steve is bringing to you is just a sample of all the insights within his bridge builder program. And I, I know firsthand at what a valuable program that is. So Steve, I'm gonna share the screen. And if you could uh, walk us through your insights uh, as we roll into September. Fair enough. So you're going to push that over to me now. All right. Do you see my screen, David? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me click the button. Yep. I see your screen. All right, fine. Uh, well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, on the West Coast, and good afternoon to the people on the uh, – the East Coast, and I'm not sure what time it is in the middle of the country, so it's either good morning or good afternoon. Uh, I'm honored to, again, uh, be speaking with you and sharing some, uh, as Dave said, some insights. I know that probably the single most important thing to realtors going into the next couple of weeks is making sure they're prepared for trade, and I don't know that anyone has done a better job of preparing you to help prepare them for that eventuality uh, than Mortgage Coach. So I think Dave's done a great job. But I can tell you, since uh, I have over, well over 10,000 agents involved in, in our programs, and um, we have over 1,000 loan offices helping agents involved in our programs, um, that there are some challenges they're up against right now that I think that if you were cognizant and sensitive to some of their challenges right now, that would actually help you introduce the TRID situation to them a little easier. It's almost as though if there was someone that uh, was already really busy on something and you needed them to work on another project, acknowledging the project they were on before you introduce the second project be important. They would realize you understand what they're going through. So what I do want to take a few minutes this morning and do is help you understand exactly where the market is and what the biggest challenges in the market are but I want to make sure you understand that probably the best way you can help your realtors moving forward is to make sure that the whole trend situation is handled professionally. And again, I don't know anyone better than David to set you up for that and help you with that process. All right, but let's talk about the market itself. First off, Fannie Mae's come out with a new home purchase sentiment, in, uh, sentiment in, index. It's brand new. This is the first month it came out. But they did numbers all the way back in their records to 2011. All right. And what they're really taking is the National Housing Survey, which is a pretty lengthy survey they do every month, and they've meshed it into a single calculated item. And what I wanted you to see is exactly what's happening to the real estate business from May 2011 until now. Over the last four years, the market's getting better and better and better. Now, you know, there's been, you know, slips, a, a shoot up, a slip, but if we take a look at a trend line on that graph, the market's constantly getting better. 
and I want you to see that at this time, and the August numbers aren't out yet, that's why we have it only up until July, the foot traffic, the number of people looking at houses right now, NAR actually has a way to calculate that. The number of people, not the people in contract, not the people that have already closed on a house, that's like delayed data. These are the number of people looking at houses. The orange represents 2014, the blue represents this year. And we can see two things. The first thing that we can see is we're totally crushing the numbers from last year. And the second thing we can see is the numbers are still way high. So that the, the amount of demand, people looking for houses, is way above where it was last year. We had a pretty decent year last year, and it doesn't seem to be waning going into the fall. That will guarantee we have a great fall and a great winter, all right, on the demand side. Let me show you the flip side so you can understand what agents are going through right now. This is the amount of people wanting to buy a house. This is a graph showing the amount of people, the supply side, of people putting their house on the market. Since the beginning of the year, four out of the seven months, we've been below last year's. Now remember, demand every single month this year was way above last year, but the supply, four of the seven months, are below. And take a look at the last month that we have data on. It's way below. So most of you already know this. Some of you feel this. But one of the biggest challenges we have right now is there's not enough supply in the market. So when you're talking about TRID or anything else that you're trying to introduce, your agent might be saying, you know what I really need right now is a listing. I'm not worried about what's going to happen when they sell the house. I'm worried about getting the listing in order to get a sale. All right? So I want you to be sensitive to that. Again, TRID is the single most important thing that we could talk about in the next 30 to 60 days. But I want you to be sensitive to the other challenges they're having. Now, to highlight how we might have a solution to this challenge, Warren Buffett's real estate company, Berkshire Hathaway, it is actually a real estate company called Berkshire Hathaway. It's one of the largest companies in the country. He bought many of the Prudential offices. He had his own private brands across the country. I know because I speak at most of them. I'm a very good client of, uh, they're a very good client of mine. Um, they just came out with a, a gigantic survey looking at why sellers might not be putting their houses on the market. Why is that important? Because of that last bar that we see there. So let's take a look at some of the um, uh, results of their survey. And if you look down at the bottom right hand corner, it, the survey was done by Elman Berlin for HSF. That's Home Services, uh, um, home service uh, Families uh, Affiliates. That is the, the, the brand name for Berkshire Hathaway. That's the mother company for Berkshire Hathaway. All right, 53% don't realize that the number of, of homeowners thinking about putting their house on the market don't realize that the number of homes for sale in the market is lower than it was last year. So part of the challenge is if they're thinking about putting their house on the market, they don't know there's a great time to do it. 94% of the potential sellers believe their listing inventory has not recently decreased. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, what's that saying? A recent survey says they don't know that last red bar exists. The amount of inventory is decreasing rapidly, and sellers thinking about putting their house on the market don't realize that. Now, another thing the survey brought out is 23% of homeowners, of all homeowners across the country, are considering selling their home, but haven't put it on the market for sale yet. Of that 23%, it's almost one out of four houses, half of those one out of four houses that are contemplating selling um, would be more likely to put their homes on the market if given more information about the process. So what's the biggest challenge your realtor partners have right now? There's not enough listings. Why are there not enough listings? The people, that one out of four houses that are thinking about putting their house on the market, half of them say, you know what, I need more information before I can move forward. Now, there might be some people, uh, like on this call, say, well, listen, you know, those are listings, and you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to mortgage professionals, listings don't really jump to the you know, top of your priority list. All right, you're looking for the buyer. You're looking for the person getting the mortgage. 
I always want to make sure that everyone realizes that almost every buyer, uh, almost every seller becomes a buyer. And you can't get those first-time buyers unless we free up this inventory. But even, let's just take a look at the listings now. That survey also indicated that 67% are either move up or they're going to want to get the same house, the same you know price house, same size house they have now. That means 67% are probably going to need a mortgage. So when you're thinking about that seller or that listing, remember that two out of three are going to need your services. So if we could help the agents get those listings, it's going to help you in two different ways, three different ways. Number one way, they'll listen to anything else you say, including trade, because you're helping them with their number one concern, their pain right now. Number two, the second way that it helps you, is it frees up inventory that that first and second time home buyer could buy, and that's going to bring you more purchase business. And number three, two out of three are going to need your services to move into the next house they're buying, the current sellers. So it's really super important that we help the agents go through that process. And the next slide I'm going to uh, show you is going to explain to you that they're putting it right in your hands. You have a tremendous opportunity. Because when the survey said, what is stopping you? What is that information you need in order to put your house on the market? Here are three of the major concerns, and they didn't pick one, they could pick multiples. But here are three, the three major concerns that people had. These are current homeowners. They're worried about their credit score when they sell their house and buy another house. 80%, four out of five. More than three out of four are worried about the stricter lending requirements. And 68% are trapped, believe they're trapped in their current mortgage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take the last one first. We showed us uh, uh, last month, we gave you some great information that only 30%, 38% of the people, I'm sorry, 37% of the people are still negative equity, all right, or believe they're a negative equity. Uh, I apologize on that. 37% don't realize they have 20% equity. It's not negative equity. Don't believe, they don't realize they have more than 20% equity. But 69% do have more than 20% equity. So that last piece there, trapped in that current mortgage, you have to help your agents get out there and talk to sellers about the equity in their house. If they realized they had enough equity in the house, they would make the move. They just don't realize that. And the first two, credit scores and stricter lending um, requirements, that falls right into your ballywick. All you'd have to do is show them this slide. Is credit back to 2006? No. But what people are reading in the papers is nobody's getting a mortgage. But we know we're writing mortgages. We're selling houses. We're selling a lot more houses this year than we did last year. And a lot more people are getting mortgages. Because not that it's a simple way, but every single month it seems to get a little bit easier to get a person a mortgage. So the concept that's holding three out of four people back, that they're not sure if they can get a mortgage, most of that is myth. They do have equity in their house. They do have a good enough credit score. They just don't know it. Help your agents understand that, and then help your agents teach that, and you'll see what the difference is. And FICO scores, study after study after study. All right? And remember, four out of five are worried about their credit scores. And the reason they're worried, study after study after study, show that well over 40% of Americans believe you need about an 800 FICO score to get a mortgage. That's what they believe. Now, if we only could give a mortgage or get a mortgage to someone with 800 FICO score, we'd all leave the business, both realtor and on the mortgage side. Because actually the average FICO score on approved loans, according to Ellie May and the latest report, is not 800. It's not 780. The median FICO score is not even 760. And if we jump to FHA, it's 100 points less than where the consumer thinks they need to be. But none of this means anything unless you help your agents teach sellers this. 
and ladies and gentlemen, when you help your agents do this, all right, really explain what's happening in the market, really explain what the opportunities are for people, this is what you're going to find. That according to the study done by Berkshire Hathaway, done by HSF, the, the, the mother company for Berkshire Hathaway, this is what the consumer says was the number one challenge before they sold the house. Researching market trends to get smart on the housing market. That's what bridge builders stand for. That's what I've dedicated my life to the last, the last 20 years of my life to. Helping homeowners through their agents, through their mortgage professionals, get the market trends to get smart on the housing market so they can make the best decision. And that's what they said, according to the survey, was the single most important thing for them. Help your agents fill the biggest challenge or to overcome the biggest challenge sellers have. You'll get them more listings. If you get them more listings, they will love you. They'll listen to trade or anything else you want to talk about because you've taken away their greatest pain. And in that process, you're going to free up a whole bunch of inventory for this guy. I will tell you that one bridge builder just put this on, just put this as a picture on his Facebook account and got two customers off this. He said, listen, if you feel like this with this guy, give me a call. I'll get you into a house of your own. Within 25 minutes, he had two separate people contact him and said, yeah, I'm ready to get out of this rental. I'm tired of paying my landlord's mortgage. Because this is what a lot of people are facing right now. And what th that first-time buyer is no better educated than the, the, the homeowner themselves. They think they need all of the, the you know, great credit score, this and that, and the next thing. But the American Enterprise Institute took a study of all first-time home buyers in July. The August numbers are not out yet. 71% have down payments of 5% or less. Yet they think they need 20% down or they, they shouldn't make a move. The median FICO score on first-time home buyers in July was 709, not 790. And 20.7% had a FICO score below 660. Now, I'm not suggesting you should be pumping out there that, hey, listen, we can get you a loan if you have a 580 FICO score. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is we have to educate the consumer that they don't need 20% down and an 800 FICO score in order to buy a house, whether they're a first-time home buyer or second home buyer. And if we don't help those first-time home buyers, this is what they're faced, that they run up against. This is the median asking rent since 1988. And ladies and gentlemen, if you look all the way to the right of that graph, it's spiking. And studies show that spike will continue at least for the next couple of years in the vast majority of the country. Now, some people are waiting, you know, and they're saying, well, you know, I don't want to pay PMI. I want to wait and, and save that down payment so I don't have to pay that extra money. Freddie Mac themselves put this out. I made the graph a lot, you know, prettier, for lack of a better term. But they, Freddie Mac had this on their blog. All right, it assumes a 30-year mortgage. You could look at all the assumptions down at the bottom. But if you bought a $200,000 home and bought it for a down payment of $10,000 versus a 20% down payment, 5% versus 20%, and they did the numbers. And the numbers do show, their numbers, Freddie Mac's numbers show, that the difference in payment in principal and interest is $232.75. Now remember, when people are hearing that, they're saying, I don't want to pay that $200, extra $232. Maybe I should wait to save more money down before I buy the house. We have to really educate. And either we're educating the buyer or helping the real estate professional educate the buyer. And let them know things like this. You're right. You'll save $2,793 by saving if you could save that 20% over the next several months. But ladies and gentlemen, based on CoreLogic's projected appreciation for the next 12 months, the house itself is going to go up $9,400. So while they were saving the $2,793, it was costing them. They're happy about they're going to save that amount of money. In actuality, over that year, it cost them, assuming that the prices do go up, where CoreLogic's projections show, they're actually losing 66, over $6,600. Well, Steve, the um, 
PMI is going to stay with the loan longer than one year, and with FHA is going to stay until the end of the loan. Ladies and gentlemen, it might not go over 4.7%. 4 we might go back to normal appreciation of 3% on an annual basis. But a $200,000 house at 3% is still going up more than the money they'd be saving. So the net to them is they're losing money by waiting to save the down payment. And what do you and I know? If they're renting a house, the chances of them saving that down payment to get it much higher? Uh, I'm not going to say it's nil and none, but it's close to nil and none. But if we don't educate the people, if we don't take on the heart of a teacher, as Dave Ramsey talks about, then we're making a mistake. And what are the ramifications of that mistake? Well, here is the income necessary for a family to qualify for a median-priced home at that time. 2012, if you wanted to buy a median-priced house, it's based on 25% qualifying ratio for monthly housing expense to gross monthly income with a 20% down payment. Why are those the, the particulars? Because that's what not decided the particulars should be. This is a report right from the National Association of Realtors. While they're waiting to save a couple of extra dollars, the amount of money they need in income is dramatically increasing over the last couple of years. Now that goes 2012, 2013, 14, and today. Let's just take a look at what it did just this year. This is just 2015, month by month, what the prices have been going up. They need more income to meet that other price. We have to help them understand that waiting to save a couple of extra dollars because that's what somebody told them they should do. Their Uncle Charlie, and Uncle Charlie's still living with his mother because he never bought a house. Uncle Charlie's 52 years old living in his mother's basement. And he's telling them, no, if you don't have 20% down, you should never buy a house. Let them know the ramifications. And especially, let's just take a look at a person looking to buy a house right now, right this second. If they decided that's what they wanted to do, if by the time that they found the house, by the time that they put the house in contract, by the time they got approved for the mortgage, they'd be probably, if they're, if they're looking at the beginning of October, they're moving in sometime the end of December to the beginning of January. Let's make it January. Let's assume they bought a $250,000 house this January. And let's assume that prices increased based on the home price expectation survey, something we explain to bridge builders what that exactly is, survey of 100, over 100 leading experts in the country. If we take their numbers, and let's forget about interest rates, the equity buildup just in the value of the home, forget about the equity that they'll also make by you know paying off the mortgage, just on the value of the home, the increased value of the home. In the next four years, Someone bought a house today, $250,000 house. They've increased their family wealth by over $34,000. That's the ramification of not helping someone. That's what you're costing that family. So it's important that we get together with our realtor partners and we go on an education binge right now. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not just helping that individual. NAR just came out with the economic impact of every home sold by state. So you can look at your state right on this, this map, and the number there, if it's Michigan, is 38,000. If it's Hawaii, it's 177,000. That's the amount of money that's added to the uh, local economy, the state economy, every time a house sells. So what we do is more than just, like, your realtors don't just listen to sell houses. You just don't get mortgages for houses. You help people achieve the American dream. And by more and more people achieving the American dream, the dream of America comes true. We can help our own economies doing exactly what we do. As a matter of fact, as, as an ending to the um, that a study we talked about that uh, Berkshire Hathaway has. HSF is the, the mother company of Berkshire Hathaway. Their CEO, a friend of mine, Gino Belfiore, he put it best. Education is essential in today's market. The stage is set for real estate pros to connect with consumers, learn their needs and concerns, and determine the best way for sellers and buyers to capitalize on the opportunities that exist today. 
and that's everyone's obligation. Education is essential in today's market. Now, the great news is, well, let's take a look at how you educate people, and let's take a look at everything that Mortgage Coach offers you. If we're going to educate people, we have to know a couple of rules about that. Number one is if you're trying to present anything to anyone and you're not using powerful visuals, you're making a grand mistake. MacroVU Visual Learning, a company that talks about how to educate an adult, lets us know that if we use powerful visuals, 64% of the people will make a, 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 an immediate decision because they really understand it. 34% increase seeing present a you as more convincing if you use powerful visuals. And what do we want to do? We want to make more money and spend less time doing it. 24% is the amount of time the presentation is reduced by if you use powerful visuals. 64% of the people are going to jump and say, hey, listen, I understand it now. Let's go right now. 34% are going to see you as more convincing, and it's going to take you less time if you use powerful visuals. A study by OSHA showed that uh, multiple studies by educational researchers suggest that human learning occurs by approximately these percentages. Let's stop talking about what they should be doing, and let's do a better job of showing them what they should be doing. Learning occurs 83% of the time when you use visuals. And if you're just talking the story, that number drops down to 11. And remember, we want to use powerful visuals. Studies suggest that three, the same thing from that OSHA report, studies suggest that three days after a presentation, people retain these percentages of what they learned. If you're just going to talk, if you're just going to ramble, 10% of the people, they're going to remember 10% of what you said three days later. If you use a visual, just a visual presentation, it's 35%. Well, what is mortgage coach doing? They're giving you the opportunity to use video. They see you. You're talking to them. You're showing them great visuals. You're definitely in that last category, 65%. So you're getting, instead of 1 out of 10, you're getting 2 out of 3, almost, that are going to take what you say and, and, and remember it three days later while they're making decisions. And probably the most important thing is, whether, and we just learned that whether it's a move up buyer who's still just as afraid about the mortgage process, or a first time home buyer who's scared to death of the mortgage process, they want someone they can trust. They want somebody that they can feel comfortable with that's going to make sure that they're okay. Well, here's from the MacroVU Visual Learning Report The Power of Using Visuals. Present is using visuals perceived as more effective. People said such things as the presenter was more interesting, more concise, more professional, more credible, better prepared. You want to build trust? Accomplish those five things. And to accomplish those five things, you have to use powerful visuals. I'm going to turn it back over to Dave for two things. The first thing I want to do is let Dave talk about mortgage coaching, the power of the visuals used there. And the lucky thing is he probably has one of the best people in the industry that knows how to use videos, that knows how to use uh, strong visuals, uses a lot of the visuals we use and what he does. Jeremy Forsay is might be, if he's not the best in the country about visual learning, he's definitely in the top couple. Thank you very much for the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. And David, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Right on. Well, Steve, as always, you bring just tons of value. Uh, we do have one of the best in the business. I, I can't think as we're coming to tread where loan officers need to be better educators. I can't think of two better guests to prepare the mortgage coach community than you, Steve. And Jeremy, welcome to the call, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay, guys? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. Awesome, so, Steve, so, Steve, I don't know if you're going to be able to stay on the call, but feel free to add some color. You know, Jeremy and I are going to really just have a conversation. You know, I want to I wanna help prepare mortgage coach members for TREP, and we've had a lot of interviews that I think will be helpful, and I think having Jeremy provide his color as a top producer is going to be especially important. 
So, so Jeremy, David, you just heard so you that. Know, David, David, just so you know, I would never miss anything Jeremy was doing, so I will hey, be in the call. You know what? I, 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 this is a big love fest. I think if you guys don't know this, like, so Steve Harney is not only one of my idols, but he is one of my mentors. Like, I've known Steve now, or of Steve, and been in relationship for, geez, uh, eight years. So eight years um, I've been following Steve Harney, using all his stuff. I subscribe to you know everything that he has. And so it's always like a total honor uh, to be on a call with you, Steve. And I mean, you hit the nail on the head as far as an education piece is that um, I think that we have to get real clear that uh, we're not salespeople. We're actually educators, especially in this environment. And you'll never have to make another sale if you can learn how to teach. And I think it's so, so, so important, especially with the TRID conversation, um, that it's forcing us to be better, which I think is a great thing uh, in our industry. So, Steve, um, nice to connect with you again, my man. Same, same thing here. Same thing here. Well, I, uh, Jeremy, I already got a great quote. You'll never, you'll never have to sell another deal if you can learn how to teach. So let's, let's bring this to the to mortgage coach land. You know, so many loan officers are still quoting rates with fee worksheets, emails. You know, they're not delivering each and every family a mortgage coach experience. And Jeremy, you and I, we were talking um, last week. I, I had reached out to you saying, hey, I'm trying to prepare mortgage coach loan officers to turn tread into an advantage and to just crush it. And I had asked you, you know, Jeremy, you know, for what you know about what's happening with tread, you know, how much more valuable is mortgage coach and how are you planning to use it? So Jeremy, why don't you, you and I just have that conversation? So first of all, what do you say to all the mortgage coach members out there that are not delivering a TCA to every family and knowing that trends coming, you know, what wisdom and advice do you have? Well, you know, um, at the risk of sounding like a father talking to children, um, I mean, I feel like a broken record in this conversation for years now. And the scary thing is, is that um, those who are not adopting this every single time, you're, we're just getting lost in the dust. We're getting lost in the shuffle. We're getting put in the rat race. Um, forget commoditization. You're just not, we're just not relevant if we're not delivering um, information that you can touch, that you can feel, that you can listen to, that someone can connect with on an emotional basis that actually gives really clear, concise, accurate information. So, um, I mean, I think it's paramount that every single person, I mean, I do an MC, just so you guys know, this is not fluff, this isn't BS. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me that, do you really do one? Yes, I do one every single time for every single borrower. I'm looking at my task list right now for today, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six from new apps that came in over the last 24 hours that I have to do today. Every single time someone wants anything rate, fee, program related, I use ATCA. It is the only way to really selfishly leverage my time and speed up the sales process and also um, selflessly give everyone all of the information that they need in order to make an educated decision on what's going to be best for them. Because at the end of the day, it's not up to us to make a decision for the customer of what we think would be best per their situation. It's for us to outline all of the options that are available to them per what they are looking for. And that's what's most important. So um, I think it's paramount right now with uh, TRID coming out to really not only separate yourself, but to protect yourself and be ahead of the curve with making sure that we are giving people the right options to make an educated decision and really try to speed up that sales process uh, in an environment that's being touted as this new um, regulation is going to slow everything down. I actually don't buy into that. Um, I only think it's going to slow things down um, if you're not ahead of the eight ball. Like you can prepare for anything. So think of like triathletes, right? Like it's not like um, they sign up for a triathlon and then they wait until a week before and then they start training, right? They prepare way in advance so that they are ready for that event to get the best time possible. I think of the same thing with TRIG and using Mortgage Coach and all the tools that are available to us is that if we know it's coming, it's really easy to prepare for and make sure that it's going to be a seamless transition. So, so Jeremy, you, you know I did this call with um, 
Richard Horn. And, you know, he's the guy who was with the CFPB that helped, was the lead on TRID. And you know, this is a quote from him, the new loan estimate was custom designed for better understanding and usability. And code word for the CFPB, when they use the word usability, that means to rate shop, you know, to help, you know, shop a transaction. And then, you know, this was another quote that Richard said. He said that, hey, we went through this quantitative, quantitative, quantified testing where we compared TRID disclosures versus the old disclosures, and families had a 29% better understanding of the new disclosures. So, you know, one thing, I think the name of the game as a mortgage professional is customer understanding. The loan officer that delivers the best customer understanding is the loan officer that wins. So, Jeremy, when I asked you the question, you know, how much does it improve the customer understanding when you deliver a total cost analysis with a video? Uh, I, again, it, you, your answer was so beautiful that I, I just said, hey, can you come in and help inspire and push everybody to, to take action? But how would you answer that? How much does a TCA improve understanding? Sure. So as you guys just saw through the slides, um, Dave said that in the study that 29% more people um, understood, understood it better. Okay, So almost a third of the test group thought it was easier to understand. So is that an improvement? Sure. But as far as real understanding goes and quantifying it using uh, TCA, a Mortgage Coach Edge, every single time with video, when, I, when Dave first asked me, I'm like, how do you want me to answer that? I mean, it's 1x, 2x, 5x, 10x. It's infinite. I mean, the amount of information that you can fit into a two-minute video with a loan presentation is really incredible. And so, I mean, I would say that it not only... Um, not only delivers understanding um, and simplicity and clarity, because those are the three things, by the way, that are really important uh, to consumers, especially going through a transaction that, let's face it, is not, um, it's not the easiest thing to get a mortgage, right? It's, I don't think it's hard. It's just hard to get people to understand um, how quickly we need them to act, uh, to make a decision, and to digest all of that information quickly simply and with clarity. And that's what the TCA does for all of my customers. And that's why I do it 100% of the time. I mean, we just, I had a client this morning who emailed me 7.30 in the morning. They decided to move forward with a loan and then they emailed me and said, hey, um, it looks like we um, had a misunderstanding um, on the loan numbers that were sent over and what we're trying to do. Because we really want like a 25 or pay off the year, uh, the loan in 28 years. But I went back and rewatched your video, and you were crystal clear. It was our fault, not yours. So now I completely understand. Are you saying we're getting a new 30-year loan, but if we pay the old payment, we'll pay it off in 27 years? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. And they've moved forward. So that's just a great real-life example of creating clarity, uh, it being simple, the borrower still not even really understanding it, but then giving them a tool that they can go back and reference and watch it again and seek understanding and ask better questions so that then we can educate specifically on what's not sticking with the customer. So I'd say it increases um, you know, the sponge effect, I like to call it, with, with consumers um, and families that we're helping. I don't know, 9x, 10x, I mean, it, it's, it's almost infinite, Dave. Well, your, your answer when we talked was that it, it, at least 100% better understanding yeah. of the options versus just the fee worksheet and disclosures. And, and no doubt, the feedback I've gotten from mortgage professionals is it is, it is, it is a, you know, a game-changing level of better understanding of their options. And again, when you are a mortgage professional and you help a family make a better decision, they trust you, they do business with you. And Dave Ramsey, all... I love this because it's so simple. He always just says, it always starts, you know, the relationship always starts with going into the goals. And when you're a loan officer and you're talking to a family, you, get, you listen to goals, and then you do a total cost analysis that shows them how they're getting it, their goals. It doesn't get much simpler than that. So, so Jeremy, let's, let's get a little bit tactical. Uh, you know, when you, when you really go through these disclosures, you know, there's, there's page one. And, you know, while I did this interview with Richard Horn last week, and you know, he's, a, he's an attorney, 
He was providing compliance feedback. He was explaining some of the intention of the CFP while they were doing it. But, you know, as a mortgage professional and you're getting ready to, you know, bring TRID into your marketplace, let's just go through page one, two, and three. And if you could just provide some commentary, you know, what you like or, you know, you're, you're a sales leader talking to other salespeople, you know, what's going through your head on page one and, and how are you going to have, are you going to have a different conversation with people? What, what does page one in TRID mean to you? Um, so page one, I actually, once again, I'm, I'm a fan of, of the, I think it's better. It's definitely an improvement. Um, I mean, I've never, ever, ever, ever sent a loan disclosure package to a borrower who just said, yep, it all makes sense. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Uh, they always want to know why does it look different compared to what you sent me in the mortgage coach edge? Why does it look different than the total cost analysis? Because it's not, it's not as clear. Um, I don't, I still don't like the fact that they add the closing cost in with other things that are other quote unquote closing cost that are really like prepaids or interest or stuff like that. That always is going to throw everyone off. So once again, we have to use that to our advantage, right? And educate in the video in the TCA that we're doing that. Hey, it's going to look different when you get, you know, the uh, loan disclosure package. And here's why is that we won't know what the prepaid interest is until the, you know, we identify the exact day that we're going to close. It's not an actual closing cost. It's the actual um, just prepaid mortgage payment or interest that's due on the loan. So I do think that they did a good job. Um, it's better. I think it's a lot better. And I think that it will be easier to match up um, with the Mortgage Coach Edge reports that we make. I still don't think it's going to be perfect. It's not going to be exact. But once again, whenever something is not perfect or exact, it gives you the opportunity to educate them as to why we use the Mortgage Coach Edge. I can't tell you how many times I've had a conversation with someone about this is exactly why we create that video presentation for you because what I'm showing you is 100% real and we stand by it to the dollar. What you're seeing over here is going to be very confusing and not add up and it's going to be harder to read than the summary of what I'm presenting you. So of course, I'm more than happy to go over it with you. Um, but once again, let's always reference back. I'm always pushing them back to the Mortgage Coach TCA. Okay. Let, okay. Let's, let's, so let's go back and review that. So that's you know your you, know, you got your disclosures and you know from what Richard said, page two is going to create more questions, and then page three is where I hear a lot of the buzz in the industry. You know. Many loan officers don't like the cost over five years because it's such a large number. Uh, obviously, you and I love that number because that's that's a great yeah. number for families to make a great liability decision. So this is a huge, undebatable win for for families when getting into mortgage debt. Um, and, and Jeremy, you're pre you're well prepared to to do that. And every mortgage coach loan officer is using a total cost analysis. You're well prepared. Now, Tiff, you know, I mean, even Richard said that, hey, when you look at these three comparisons, they're kind of in order of value. You know, five years is most valuable and tip is least. You know, Jeremy, there's no doubt that this will create more conversations, potentially more rate shopping. You know, it sounds like your big, your plan is just to make sure that you, you really communicate proactively ahead of them getting the disclosures. Anything you want to talk about as it pertains to tip and how you plan to talk about that or position that within the conversation. Well, what's interesting about it, and, and maybe I'm jaded from this or spoiled, call it what you want, but I mean, we, Dave, we've been having this conversation with people for seven years already. I mean, because this is what the mortgage coach does, is that we show people uh, what their total cost is over time. Um, I love to show people, um, especially on a fixed rate mortgage, what the total cost is over five years and 30 years. That way they can see exactly what the payments are. And, and what's interesting is that a lot of people's beef with this page is that it's going to cause, quote, unquote, more rate shopping. I don't think so. I really don't. I don't think that it's going to cause any more rate shopping than there is right now unless you're just a weak teacher. I mean, if you know what objections are going to come up, if you know what is going to be on those disclosures, why wouldn't we just reference it up front? And... I think a lot of loan officers that are lazy, and I see this within my organization and with lots of people that I talk to um, outside, and whenever I get lazy on it, guess what, I have an issue too, is that 
a lot of people don't want the conversations, which is insane to me. They're like, this is just going to create more work. It's going to no. The whole point of of having a, a family that you're helping and a customer is that you want to be in conversation with them. That's where you have maximum influence. It's not from sending them something and hoping it works out. So um, I'm excited about this part because uh, not only does it do a better job, but once again, we can direct them right back to the TCA and have an awesome conversation, whether that be live, using the live feature within Mortgage Coach and doing screen share or whether it be doing another video or screenshot and pointing them to, this is exactly what I was showing you here. I think it gives us almost an unfair advantage against the competition and that we're going to have less leakage and create more sales by creating clarity for more families using this disclosure with the TCA. Dave, can I so, jump in there for a second on that? Can I jump in? I think absolutely. This is Steve. I was at a, a, a luncheon in Manhattan, I guess it was two weeks ago, uh, and I was sitting with probably the single most influential pe person in real estate, I'm not going to drop any names here, but a very, very talented person, very influential person in real estate, and another really power hitter in real estate uh, from um, you know the uh, information side. And the second most powerful person sitting at that table, I was like, you know, third by a lot. The second most powerful person, we were talking about the stock market, because two weeks ago, stock market was, you know, vacillating dramatically, swings of 500 points each day. And the, he said, well, do you think this is going to cause a challenge? And the other person right there that was sitting at that lunch and said, I hope so. So I looked over and I said, why is that? He goes, because the three people sitting at this table, when things become more challenging, we educate. And when there's times of challenge, that's exactly what the consumer is looking for. Someone that can explain away the fears they have. And if there's not challenges, our services aren't as necessary. If everyone could figure it out on their own, they wouldn't need us. Right. So the more challenging things become, the more complicated in some ways things become. The, the more important the teacher becomes. And that just opened my eyes to so much. It was like amazing to me. So what Jeremy is saying right now, this isn't a challenge. It is an opportunity I agree with tremendously. I love it. I love it. So so folks, and Jeremy, tell me if you like this, this way of positioning tip. You know, so many loan officers, I think, are going to almost kind of like make it like a joke. They're going to kind of disparage the, the form and, and tip. Because, you know, we don't like it as an industry. Even Richard, who was with the CFPB, talked about how that was something we had to really inherit from Congress and Dodd-Frank. Uh, but here's the way I see it. I see it as a number that makes a family realize just how big a deal it is to get a mortgage. I mean, getting a mortgage is the biggest financial planning decision that 90% of Americans make. And it's a big number. So it's a, to me, it's a big number to help really see that, hey, getting a mortgage is a big deal. And yeah, it's really expensive. You know, look at how much interest you're paying over the course of a lifetime. And then if you're using Mortgage Coach properly to, you know, show transparency, hey, we're showing you the cost over time, we're showing you tip, and then we can also show you how to pay off that mortgage faster and reduce your total interest over time. So, I mean, Jeremy, do you like that where you really – you come into this with a very positive spirit that, hey, you know, John and Sue, it's an important number from the CFPB because it helps you see how important and what a large invest this, this is makes. And they want to make sure that 2007 never happens again. And then when families get into mortgage debt, they understand it, they understand their options, and they make a great decision. And this just helps make the, the, the importance of this mortgage decision even more clear and obvious to you. Jeremy, how do you, again, that's my version of it, how would you do that? Because I want to help mortgage coach members come into TRID, come into the new LE with confidence, passion, a positive attitude, and some language that helps them bring confidence to families. Thoughts? That, that's so great. Sorry, I was busy writing down your script because that, that, was, that was money. So you said the government wants to make sure that 2007 doesn't happen again and that owning a home is really expensive and it should be taken seriously. I'm going to start using it. That's great. 
Um, I mean, I say stuff similar to that, but I think that that's a great way, everyone on the call, I'd write that down, what Dave just said, that the government wants to make sure that 2007 doesn't happen again, and that owning a home, it's, it's really expensive. And what I love about this is that, here's what I would ask, right? If I'm a consumer looking at this, here's one thing that I might say is, holy cow, so 77% is interest? Like, I want, how do I pay less? Like, I'm, I'm already thinking that. So if we know that that's what they're going to be thinking, because by the way, only 33% of our families that we're helping are actually going to say that to us, even though maybe 80% are thinking it. Okay, only 30% are going to actually verbalize that because they're scared and they're embarrassed to ask silly questions. That's where a lot of the power is, you guys, on proactively teaching people is that we can teach them things that they want to know that they will not articulate to us. It's very important to know that. So in that conversation, Dave, if, like, you, know, if you were asking me that, I would say, I am so glad that you asked me that question. So I have your, you know, your total cost analysis up here, and I've already done the analysis. If I could show you how to shave uh, $50,000 in mortgage payments off of your loan by simply making an additional $172 a month payment, would you be interested in that? Do you know what they're going to say? Yeah. How do you do that? So that big number, I can make less? Absolutely. And I can show you exactly how to do it. So I think that it just, once again, gives us the power to be proactive and point out the things that are scary rather than wait for someone to react to, and, and, or excuse me, to bring it to our attention and then have us come from a reaction standpoint. Way more powerful to point out the ugly stuff and figure out solutions for it before they ever even think of it. Now, does it mean that they're going to pay the extra $150 a month? No. Um, but are they armed with the information to be educated to know how to do it if they choose to do so? Absolutely. And at the end of the day, that's what our job is. So, so between the two of us, I think we provided a lot of value there. So I want to I want to talk about another part of TRID that I want to help prepare everybody with. You know, and this came from a compliance attorney, Mitch Kider. TRID is all about communicating, educating, and managing the borrower and the realtor experience and doing it at a level of precision and competence like you've never done it before. So, so a couple of the things that I see, Jeremy, I see that the consultation could be a little longer because uh, they could be asking more questions and you're having to do more preparation. But, but the weekly updates and statuses, because there's going to be more disclosure, change of circumstance, you know, there's more precision up front and there's going to be more communication throughout the loan. So there, there is the possibility of having to have extra phone calls that you're not having now that you're going to have to have. And I, Jeremy, this is the way I see it. I was talking to the Gaylord Hansen team, you, you know, you know, Sam Hansen and that group, and they, they update the mortgage coach video. It's like, hey, I forwarded the TCA, I've provided options, but now they can continue to update the TCA, update the video, and, and save time on those update calls. So I don't I don't know that you're doing that now, Jeremy. You know, if you're updating the video multiple times to to help it be become a communication channel. But do you see how with Trid coming, how updating that video and updating the numbers to make an efficient closing and also to reduce the time it takes for updating calls? Do you see that? And and what's your vision on how you might expand the way you're using Mortgage Coach, given you know what I just said? Sure. So, so I use a ton of video, you guys, uh, within Mortgage uh, Coach Edge and even just videos that I just send to people with updates. I mean, I do it all the time. So um, I understand what you were asking me now, Dave, earlier, is that yes, I mean, if something, if anything changes uh, within the loan structure, et cetera, of course I'm redoing a TCA and I'm sending out a new video that's updated. So uh, absolutely, um, I'm, I'm already doing that. And I do think that it's paramount and important. It's also really, really important within purchase transactions, you guys, to make sure that you're including the real estate agent on these things. Now, I know that there's going to be like 20% of people right now going, oh, <coughs> we can't <coughs> share personal information. You're not sharing any personal information. There's no social security number on any of this stuff. There's not 
um, you know, their, their income information's not on it, anything like that. Um, it's just an FYI keeping them in a loop, and it makes you look incredible. I mean, I landed a new um, agent a couple weeks ago, and uh, he's referred me like six people. I had two transactions going with him already, and his number one comment was on the first one that we did was, man, I can't believe, how long have you been using that video stuff? Is that a new, is that a new thing in the industry? Like, I can't believe I've never seen it before. It's incredible. I love it. I'm forwarding it to other clients and agents to show them, like, what, what is possible and the kind of information they should get from their loan officer or mortgage advisor. So the, it really does open up the communication chain. Um, I don't think that it's a um, substitute for a phone call. And so here's what I mean by that, is that we have a... Um, a mantra or a process within um, my team and the way that we operate that so when I do a video okay I always like to do the video first we call it uh, we call it email call right so send the call so whenever I send uh, by the way this picture I'm so glad to report that I'm 21 pounds lighter than this picture right now I look <laughs> right there. Um, so, I'll get rid um, of that picture for you Jeremy no no it's, it's okay I, I, it's not bad it's fine it, it's what I look like what, what can you do so um, um, is that if I make a video and Dave is my client or Steve is my, let's say that Dave's my client and Steve's the realtor, okay? And we just had uh, something happen where the appraisal came in lower than anticipated, all right? Starting to happen in my market in select areas just with the rapid increase we've had over the last 24 months. Um, I would do a video, boom, hey, it's Jeremy, blah, 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 blah. I'd email it to them. Uh, hey, click on this link here. I have an important update for you. I'm going to call to go over it. I simply email them the video and then I call immediately both the borrower first and then the agent. Um, rarely do I get the borrower on the phone or the agent. I mean, I think that that's once again a movie that we play in our head where we go, I just don't have time. It's just it's so much time to do all that. You're, you're ma leaving voicemails like 70% of the time, you guys. So um, it's just the, the video, the send, the update, and then the call with, hey, just sent you the video. Go and pushing them back to what you want them to watch. Here's what happened, um, Mr. and Mrs. Savage, the appraisal came in $10,000 less. Here's the good news. It doesn't affect your loan, so you have to have a conversation right now uh, with uh, Steve, your realtor, uh, just to make sure that you feel okay about it still moving forward at the current purchase price. But know that your loan is perfectly fine. We can still move forward with exactly how it was structured. It has no effect on the loan. And then I would call Steve. Hey, Steve, it's Jeremy Forcier from People's Home Equity. Hey, I want to give you an update real quick on the Savage file. The appraisal came in $10,000 light. It doesn't do anything as far as the loan is concerned, but I just wanted to give you a heads up in case you have to have a conversation uh, with the borrowers about what that means to them. I did a quick video to them and included you on it as well, so let me know if you have any questions. That's what it sounds like, you guys. And it saves you a ton of time, makes you look like a pro, and you're not reacting once again. You're, you're being proactive. Love it, Jeremy. So you guys, you know, what a great best practice. He's updating the video. He's leaving a call. I do want to remind every mortgage coach that with the click, I mean, literally three clicks of the button on your mobile device, you can be into the mortgage coach pro version of the app. You can click and add a video. And part of our trip preparation, because we know you're going to have to communicate more, that we wanted to make it so you can replace and add a new video. And you can do that within seconds. I mean, literally, it's, you know, once you've done it a couple times, it's three clicks of the mouse and you're re-recording, just like you're leaving a voicemail. You're just, you know, the time you would take to leave a voicemail, you can update the TCA. Now, I'm not suggesting, to Jeremy's point, that you don't still leave the voicemail because um, it is communication. It shows that you care. It shows that you are trying to help the family. And so this is a rant that I did, and let's close with this thought. Uh, you know, this is two minutes and 36 seconds. And by the way, I put a link into chat. And this was my rant to mortgage coach professionals that if you're not going to do a TCA because it's the right thing to do for the family, do it because realtors are going to start playing musical chairs. There will be tension in the industry. And other loan officers who aren't mortgage coach users, they're going to, you know, loan officers are going to be looking for new people to do business with. And if you are the one delivering a TCA to every family, and you're showing this experience to realtors are doing it, you're going to pick up some new realtors. So, Jeremy, 
What is your last thought as we wrap it up um, around how a mortgage coach can use video to pick up more business from realtors? And you listened to this video and you said, Dave, you know, you nailed it. What are what are your closing thoughts as we wrap it up to push everybody to do this? Well, my, my closing thought is actually something I, I heard on the call uh, from Steve, from Mr. Harney. And it was, you guys, it's our responsibility to go on what Steve called an education binge. Okay? We all need to get into that mindset of the education binge. And there's no better way to leverage our time and reach and to educate people with video. We have this awesome application that we can use uh, through TCA and Mortgage Coach with video. We can educate anyone we want. We can send it to one realtor individually. We can send it to 500 realtors as a blanket to tell them why this is important to make sure all their customers have this information with trade coming out. So I would say uh, take the, the philosophy of educator first, salesperson second, um, and really go on an education binge and dive deep and work on those skills. Love it. So I want to push everybody to our call tomorrow. Every Wednesday we are focusing on how to use Mortgage Coach Mobile to deliver more value to realtors and families. So we carry, we cover, you know, how to show, share, and create. So sharing a story with a borrower, sharing a strategy with a realtor on a mobile device, and how to create it. So this is just a 30-minute training. Every Wednesday we're doing this. Don't miss it this Wednesday. I do want to do a shout out and push everybody to join me with Jay Crowell next week. Jay will be our special guest. He is a, a top mortgage leader, not only a branch manager, but a producing branch manager out of the Seattle market. So join us next week at 9 o'clock for that. Uh, Jeremy and Steve, any closing thoughts before we wrap it up? Well, first of all, Jeremy, you did a great job. Thank you very much. I, I really do enjoy listening to you. And of all the weird things, is while we're, while we're on this call, I get an email. One of my staff just dropped it on my desk. Uh, they printed it out. It came to them that Realtor Magazine wants to do an interview with me saying, what are the three things realtors need to be better educators in today's market? That just got dropped on my desk while I'm listening to Jeremy talk about how important education is. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't hear Jeremy, if you didn't hear me, if you didn't hear Dave, then go home, get your, your garden hose out, put it in your ear, and wash your brain out. If you're not educating right <laughs> now, you're not succeeding right now. That's it. Jeremy hit the ball right. He hit that ball out of whatever stadium the San Francisco Giants are now playing in. He hit it into the water past the guys rowing out there. <laughs> That's awesome, you guys. Um, I would say just one last thing, Dave, is that just to give people perspective, too, is that, you guys, I'm closing just as many loans as I ever have, and I'm only originating 50% of my time right now. Like the other 50%, I'm doing corporate stuff, I'm managing, you know, overseeing nine different branches. So we talked about the selfless part of educating, but you can also really selfishly use this, which is okay to really get efficient, okay? So just keep that in mind, that it's gonna create incredible efficiencies for yourself and be able to really scale your business. Love it. By the way, Jeremy, how many loans are you closing on average a month right now? I'm closing on average year to date uh, 24.5 loans per month. Um, and yeah, it's going, it's going really, really good. So everybody did you hear that? I mean, closing over 20 loans a month, managing and leading and making time for the mortgage coach community. So Jeremy, thanks. Uh, as you guys leave, let us know what you thought of today's call on a scale of good to great. Also, if you are a guest on this call and you want to learn more about mortgage coach, click the last option that you want to get a demo. Uh, Steve, thanks for staying on the whole call and delivering so much value. Uh, and Jeremy, thanks so much for just being here, bro. I really appreciate you. All right, yeah, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.